Turkey, a country known for its interesting history, rich mix of cultures, incredible food, friendly people, and out-of-this-world natural sites. Recently, we spent two weeks exploring some of the best Turkish destinations. After enjoying the vibrant city of Istanbul for four days, we headed to Cappadocia, a place that had been in our bucket list for years. This historical region of Anatolia is located in the center of Turkey. Nowadays, Cappadocia, the land of beautiful horses, may seem like a trendy touristic destination. But beyond the stunning balloon rides at sunrise and its unique rock formations, there is also a region with an amazing past where you can find peaceful moments surrounded by surreal nature. Subscribe to our channel to join us in our adventures. In this second episode of our Turkey travel series, we will share with you our whole itinerary and travel tips to experience Cappadocia on a budget or on a more luxurious way. Very early in the morning, from Istanbul Airport, we took a 1-hour, 15-minute domestic flight to Nefsehir Cappadocia Airport. We found that the plane was the most comfortable way to reach Cappadocia. But if you are in a tight budget, you could get a night bus from Istanbul instead. Kayseri is another option in the region. Hi, doggy! As soon as we landed in Nefsehir, we quickly picked up our baggage and went to collect our rental car for the next four days. Renting a car is not totally necessary in Cappadocia. You could probably save some money by using some group tours, public transport, and walking. But we love exploring places with as much freedom as possible, so a car was the best option for us. We drove only for 40 minutes to reach our hotel for the first two nights in Goremme. We chose this budget accommodation for its affordable price, perfect location, just at the entrance of the town, and positive reviews. We have to warn you that the room we had in the lower floor, as it happens with some stone and cave hotels in Cappadocia, was dusty and didn't have great ventilation. We should have spent a little bit more for a room with a balcony in the second floor, as we both have allergies and we couldn't breathe very well at night. But don't miss later in the video the luxury cave hotel that we chose for our third night. After we checked in, we went to have a quick breakfast in a nearby cafe. We were still sleepy because we woke up at 2 a.m. to get our flight, so we also had a delicious cappuccino under the lovely sun in this other cafe. Mm. I love coffee. From our hotel, we drove for only three minutes to the first site of our Cappadocia trip, and on our way, we were already starting to feel amazed by its unusual landscape. We have our museum pass that we bought in Istanbul, so we don't have to wait for the queue because these cards allow us to enter to the museum quickly. The Goreme Open Air Museum is probably the best option to begin your Cappadocia itinerary. In here, you'll witness some majestic rock formations while learning about the history behind them. The word Goreme comes from Gor Emi, which means you cannot see this place, a name given to this valley by the early Christians that used these Cappadocian fairy chimneys as places to hide in times of persecution since the 2nd century AD. Inside the impressive caves, they built houses, refectories, and graves, but also marvelous churches and chapels with colorful frescoes.
some of the best preserved temples of Cappadocia are in this monastic complex, with many of its finest cave churches built between the 10th and 12th centuries. We walk through this UNESCO World Heritage Site in absolute wonder while imagining the life of the people that carved this engineering masterpieces. Though you won't be allowed to film inside most of these churches, the visit is a must that you shouldn't miss. We are hiking next to the Goreme Open Air Museum. It is completely free and there are a lot of trekking trails with very beautiful views and still amazing architecture. I'm so amazed because this is my first time to see this kind of architecture and rock formations. We've been to Meteora, but this is another kind of human creation. Bye! The end of the day was approaching, so we drove for 10 minutes to the Lover's Hill in Goreme. Even if this is one of the most famous places to see the sunrise, you can enjoy the sunset from this viewpoint too. From up here, the sun seemed to be reluctant to leave, but the warm golden hour slowly disappeared and the landscape was dyed with charming soft shades of magenta. After the sky exploded with vibrant colors, the city lights started to appear. Such a magical way to finish our first day in Cappadocia. But before going to sleep, we had a succulent dinner in this restaurant near our hotel. The waiters were very friendly, the servings huge, and we finally tried the famous Turkish pottery kebab. Wow. Wow. Did you burn your hand? A lot, but... <laughs> That's just in the past, not now. You're used to it now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> We just started eating. The staff gave us more complimentary food. This, this, and this. So now we have to finish everything. We're gonna eat everything. Mm -hmm. I have a new job. Bye. Although we had booked our hot air balloon ride for our first sunrise in Cappadocia, once there, the hotel staff told us that it was going to take place in our second sunrise as the weather condition was going to be perfect that day. Nevertheless, Chano woke up very early and drove to the best viewpoint over the Love Valley. At the end, the balloons also flew that morning and he could capture these epic videos. Every sunrise, if the weather is good and it's not too windy, Around 200 balloons with up to 30 people on them fly through the Cappadocian sky and skillfully in between the rock formations too. If you think that the rides are too expensive, then watching the balloons from one of the numerous viewpoints near Goreme would be the budget alternative. However, we will share with you later in the video why we consider that this experience in Cappadocia is totally worth the price if you can afford it. And if you're wondering, 
China wasn't alone in the viewpoint that morning. So be sure you arrive early to get the best spot. This Turkish breakfast with a nice variety of foods was included in our room price. Good morning! It's another day in Cappadocia. We just finished eating our breakfast and now we are on our way to the Love Valley and we're gonna hike in between the amazing rock formations where Chano took his sunrise photos this morning. So far, driving in Turkey is being a little bit stressful. Just be very careful when you are here because it's not even the only the locals, it's also the, all the tourists. Like people don't know where they are going sometimes. A lot of people crossing the streets. Just be slow, chill out, and you should be safe. After a 10 minute drive from our hotel, we started our hike across the Love Valley, one of the most famous trails in Goreme National Park. We chose the early morning to do this free trek to have fantastic light and less people. Losing again! She's losing again! <laughs> I told her to bring her hat, but she said, no, no, I don't need my hat. It's painful on the head. And I'm also having allergies with the dust and humidity, so I'm having a hard time breathing. In few minutes, the desertic landscape turned into a fresh area partially covered by trees. Shortly after, we were already walking under the huge rock formations with their peculiar shapes, some of which are up to 40 meters high. These superb stones are a random natural creation the result of 60 million years of wind and water erosion over the layer of solidified ashes from ancient volcanoes eruptions. Have you already guessed why it's called Love Valley? to eat more Turkish foods. We are so hungry. We need extra calories now. <laughs> yeah. From the access to the Love Valley Trail, we drove for 10 minutes and parked our car in the center of Uchisar. We immediately went to have our lunch and we chose this barbecue house restaurant with great reviews. Everything in the huge platter was so good and I was full and happy again. Mm. So good. We didn't know what to choose because there's so many good foods on the menu. So we just chose this mixed barbecue grill and it came with a fire to keep it warm, I guess. I love Turkish foods because it's so tasty. It's real barbecue and it's not coming from fake sauce or anything. It's it's their spices and then I love that they serve it always with the rice and for an Asian like me this is perfect just like Goreme the town of Uchisar is one of the most famous places to stay in Cappadocia and many of its cave and stone houses have been transformed into accommodations. The name Uchisar means outer citadel and it refers to the huge castle carved into the tallest rocky cone of the town. This fortress with its 60 meters height is one of the must visits in the region. Uchisar Castle is crossed by a series of underground passageways and rooms that were used as residential areas in the past. 
Although many of these spaces are currently blocked, there are still a good few that can be explored during your visit. The history of Uchisar Castle is not very well known, with the first mention in the 14th century, but references to people living here as far back as the 7th century. Something clear is that, first the Byzantines and then the Turks took advantage of the natural defense qualities of the Cappadocian terrain with its ideal camouflage for their buildings. The views from the top of the castle are some of the best of Cappadocia, so another reason to not miss this site. There's nothing better to end a great day than to witness the twilight over Uchisar from one of its best viewpoints. It's 6 in the morning and we are waiting for the transfer going to the hot air balloon. I'm so excited! Most of the balloon rides include the pick-up from your hotel. This experience has been increasing its popularity and price during the last years, so we advise to book it in advance. We paid 170 euros per person by doing the reservation with our hotel a few months before our trip. But the price had already increased to a minimum of 200 euros per person when we were there. Two and keep the end of the drop in the line. Show me Fratic police. Very nice light. See you later! <laughs> At the beginning, we were feeling goosebumps while the hot air was starting to lift the balloon from the ground. But once we were in the sky for a few minutes, witnessing the sunrise, we could feel a peaceful atmosphere difficult to explain with words. It was our first experience in a hot air balloon, and we cannot think of a better place in the world for first-timers like us. Having the privilege of admiring the Cappadocian landscape from the sky is something that we will never forget. Even if we opted for one of the cheapest rides we absolutely loved the full experience. Higher prices should mean that your balloon will fly closer to the center of Goreme with less people inside and for a longer time. But always check the company's reviews before choosing one. Pilots in Cappadocia have a lot of experience as balloons will fly at sunrise all year long if the weather conditions are safe. Do you want a shower? Yeah. Uh, shower. Probably later. Okay. <laughs> Are ready? One, two. Yeah. Professional team. Now I'm a certified flyer. And you fly on your own now? Yeah. Okay, come on. Just the balloon is there. Before checking out, we had another nice Turkish breakfast at our hotel. We drove for four minutes to the Durmus Kadir church. This old church, built in the 6th century, is one of the largest in the region. There are about 400 churches in Cappadocia, 
Some of them are free to access and still well preserved like this. These nearby fairy chimneys surely deserve a short climb too. Just two minutes driving from the church, we chose the Pigeon Valley for our morning trekking. Though this trail connects Goreme with Uchisar, we did only a short part. The valley takes its name from its great number of pigeon lofts that have been home for these birds for centuries. In the past, the manure of the pigeons was used as fertilizer to improve the productivity of the agricultural land, but also their eggs served as material for frescoes. While walking across the valley, you can still see some local farmers taking care of their farms as people have done here since ancient times. We drove for 8 minutes through the old streets of Goreme to reach our second hotel in Cappadocia. Finally, one of the most awaited moments of our trip arrived. We couldn't leave this region without staying in one of the numerous luxury boutique hotels that have been built in the Cappadocian caves. This is the second time that we stay in a cave suite hotel. The very first time was during our honeymoon in Santorini. So if you haven't seen the vlog, the link is in the description box. We don't usually stay in luxurious hotels because we are always out for the whole day until night anyway. But if my husband is able to find good quality with impressive views and good architecture such as this, and if it doesn't break our budget, we sometimes treat ourselves like today. While Chano was taking more videos of the hotel, I decided to enjoy a cappuccino and a piece of cake in the nice hotel cafe. This hotel has wonderful views over Goreme plus all the dreamy Cappadocia photoshoot sets that you often see in social media posts. They have long dresses for rent and classical cars too. We were meant to drive for 15 minutes to Ortahisar to end the day, but we found two roads closed by works and we lost some valuable time. When we arrived there, the sun had just set, but we were still able to get some shots from the most beautiful viewpoint over the town. Ortahisar has been gaining more popularity in the last years and it's becoming a famous tourist option in Cappadocia. Its 90 meters high castle dominates the town view. You can find other rock cut buildings like churches, restaurants, and boutique hotels. The town has also a type of tough stone caves and houses commonly used for keeping fruits at 10 degrees all year round. After a few months storage here, they are transported around Turkey and Europe. Once again, we had a delicious Turkish dinner with new foods to try. 
we have been traveling in Turkey for seven days now and we haven't tried their pita. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but forgive me if I don't. So now, finally, we're going to try the Turkish version of pizza. We ordered minced meat and cheese. Mm, it's good, different than pizza. Really good, it's very tasty. We wish we could have spent more time in Ortahisar. Even if it was already dark, we absolutely loved the architecture here. After another intense day in Cappadocia, a room jacuzzi was the best way to relax before going to sleep. Chano had to convince me to wake up for sunrise again, but I must admit that it was totally worth it. We highly recommend that you admire the balloons from a viewpoint near Goreme. Even if you're gonna do a ride in another sunrise, wake up early again and enjoy this unique show. Our hotel buffet for breakfast had so many choices. Eating with these views over Goreme was a pure joy. And one of the hotel Hello. cute dogs Hello. made this Hello. moment even Hello. happier for us. <laughs> you can also watch the balloons from the hotel. The light was also great in the morning from up here. We wish we could have stayed longer in our incredible hotel but there were still other places in Cappadocia that we couldn't miss. The Zelve Valley is located at the east of Kavusin village. Today, it is an open-air museum, but there were Turkish people living here until 1960. The site contains a large cave settlement with 15 Byzantine churches, the oldest ones from the 6th century. These temples are not so well preserved as the ones in the Goreme Open Air Museum, so you'll find less people here. But we guarantee that the visit will be totally worth it. Zelve doesn't have rests of monastic or elite social class buildings, so it is believed that it was mainly an agricultural village. Nice walking paths have been created to explore the valley and you can access many buildings and caves which make the experience very exciting. We are so impressed of the architecture of these houses because it's very intricate. There are like ladders here to go on top and then more stairs here to go in this room, smaller ones. And then here, there's like a small door, but it goes all the way there. And there's like an opening for another room. I would like to go, but my allergies will kill me. <laughs> Mi amor, mm -hmm. how do you think they went up there? I need to hear myself. That one breaks. No, this is for giants, not for dwarves. <laughs> You're not getting better at holding it. Mm, I'm getting better at eating it. It doesn't melt that fast. Very chewy. Nice. We drove back to Goreme to do my favorite activity in Cappadocia. It was my first time riding a horse by myself and I was super excited. 
We chose Lucky Horse Ranch after reading its positive reviews to be sure that they treat their horses with respect and care. Their prices may be slightly higher than other nearby companies, but their tours are more personalized and their horses looked very healthy to us. Our guide, Atash, was very friendly and he maintained a slow pace in easy trails to keep me safe. At the beginning, I was a little bit nervous, but after a few minutes, I started to feel a connection with Kismet, my wonderful female horse. Her name means fate, and I was so happy that destiny brought us here together. Experiencing the land of beautiful horses in this way made me love this trip even more. Derived from the Hittite word Katpatuka, horses have been a very important part of Cappadocia since ancient times. Known as imperial gifts for their speed and skills on the battlefield and in chariot races, they were used by Greeks, Persians, Romans, and Ottomans throughout history. Basically, I have allergies to horses. I cannot ride and I shouldn't be close to horses. Definitely, I shouldn't touch them. I'm just following rain. The beginning was so nice in the forest, but now we are in the middle of the mountain. It's so warm and I just destroyed already. If you still think that riding a horse is not for you, there are many other activities in Cappadocia that you can do, like ATV or Jeep tours. One last meal in Cappadocia, and once again, we really loved the Turkish foods that we ordered. You could save by buying in local supermarkets, but the value for money in the restaurants that we chose was totally worth it. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> Our trip in Cappadocia was coming to an end, but there was a last location that we didn't want to miss. Located just next to the village of Kavusin, this free access area is known as Fairy Lair. The rocks here are very similar to the ones located in the nearby Monks Valley, which we didn't have time to visit. After four days in Cappadocia, we were still in awe admiring every new location. If you reach this point of the video, we hoped that we helped you to understand how to travel here, adjusting the trip to your budget. No matter what options you choose, something is clear. Even standing there, it will be difficult to believe that a place like this exists in the world. That ends our second episode of our Turkey travel series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel to support us and to follow our adventures. Don't miss our next episodes because we will show you more breathtaking and wonderful places in Turkey. Next stop, Pamukkale. The Turkish cotton castle made of travertine rocks created by the flowing of thermal spring water next to an ancient archaeological site. Thank you so much for joining us and please don't forget to like this video. Until next time, keep exploring, rain or shine.